The profession of a diver is fraught with numerous risks. One could drown in darkness or be attacked by predators. Deep sea divers plunge into the abyss each time, balancing on the fine line between life and death. Perhaps the horrors of the ocean are worth the bravery, as in return, they uncover things that have never been seen by humanity. From giant squids to bottles with 200-year-old beer, you're on the Top Facts channel, and today, we've compiled for you 20 of the strangest things that divers have found in the depths of the ocean. Let's dive into these fascinating discoveries. Luxurious parties, nightlife, and the pursuit of pleasure. These are not modern inventions, but the realities of Roman Empire society. Ancient Roman aristocracy loved entertainment so much that they built an entire city dedicated to it, an ancient prototype of modern Las Vegas. This place was exclusively for leisure, a resort for the wealthy and famous Romans located on the northeast shore of the Bay of Naples, and it was called Baye. The city was renowned for its beautiful landscapes and luxurious villas. With a cult of hedonism, enjoyment of life in all its forms reigned supreme. It attracted noble figures such as Julius Caesar and Nero. Philosophers and poets like Seneca and Cicero condemned Baye as a place of idleness and immorality. The city of secrets hid the luxurious homes of the celebrities of the time and its extravagant feasts and scandalous activities caught the attention of the emperor, with Caligula even building a residence here. In 39 AD, he constructed a floating bridge across the bay for a grand show. This flamboyant city seemed to be punished by nature itself. Due to the slow shifts in the Earth's crust, a 328-foot coastal strip with buildings sank to the bottom of the bay. Only the structures on the hillside remained above water. The submergence occurred in stages, in the 3rd and 4th century AD and later in the 7th and 8th centuries. A malaria outbreak eventually emptied the city, but today it serves as an underwater park where divers can explore the past of such a giant as ancient Rome. A Roman ship sank off the coast of Tuscany around 140 BC, but more than two millennia later, its contents not only remained intact but also gave modern scientists and pharmacists valuable insight into the medicine of ancient Rome. After divers excavated the ruins and lifted the ship's remains from the seabed, they discovered astonishing historical artifacts inside a small tin container. Inside this box, Roman pills were perfectly preserved. A group of Italian chemists examined the pills and found a sophisticated blend of ingredients, zinc compounds with iron oxide starch beeswax, pine resin, and other plant materials. It's believed that these pills were eye medicine, as descriptions of Roman medical practices written by ancient authors like Gowan and Dioscorides have been found. Thanks to these pills, scientists have had the chance to study the exact composition and test whether ancient Roman medicine could perform miracles. Marine archaeologist Nicholas Fleming made a globally renowned discovery in 1967, the oldest submerged city, Pavla Petri. The underwater city in the Mediterranean is surprisingly well preserved, with its layout still clearly visible. Streets, buildings, courtyards, and tombs can be seen beneath the water. The entire city now lies at a depth of over 10 feet, extending over 540,000 square feet. Historians believed it thrived due to an active trade along the coast. Archaeologists have discovered at least 15 buildings with multiple rooms, as well as a complex water system and channels with pipes. Palo Petri's history stretches back around 5,000 years, built in the ancient Bronze Age between 1000 and 3000 BC. Pavla Petri suffered from numerous earthquakes, which led to its submersion. More than 50 years after its discovery, Scientists still have much work to do, but first they need permission from the Greek authorities to start excavations. On October 16, 2021, a recreational diver exploring the Mediterranean seabed discovered several historically significant artifacts. Among them was an unusual sword covered in shells and other marine organisms, making it hard to recognize its value at first. 
It was later revealed that the iron longsword was made 900 years ago, possibly belonging to a crusader knight. Experts stated that the region where the sword was found was famous during the Crusades, a series of religious wars waged by European powers to reclaim the Holy Land from Muslim rule. The sword was a straight blade, a classic example of a knight's weapon. The artifact was handed over to local authorities, where it now takes its rightful place in the Museum of Local History. A mysterious copper object was found off the coast of Florida dating back to the 17th century, resembling a cauldron. Recent analysis showed that this copper bowl indeed looks like it was used for cooking. However, considering it was found near the wreck of the Spanish galleon Santa Margarita, a new story emerges. The ship, laden with gold and silver coins and ingots, sank in 1622 during a hurricane off the coast of Florida. This bowl could have been something valuable. Perhaps it served as a diving bell used in early attempts to retrieve artifacts from the wreck. Diving bells were among the first devices for underwater exploration. They worked as air traps. The vessel was lowered into the water and the diver could stay inside the bell, breathing the air that was captured while working on the seabed. The artifact now resides at the Maritime Museum in Florida, measuring nearly five feet in diameter with no signs of burning or heating, ruling out the theory that it was used for cooking. The coast of Greece is famous for its discoveries. Among the finds of divers and marine archaeologists are items of ancient art and even ancient computers. The Antikytherium mechanism used to calculate the movement of celestial bodies. It was discovered in 1901 from a sunken ancient ship. However, there are other artifacts found at the wreck site as well, such as bronze hands belonging to an ancient statue. Researchers believed that these fragments could be part of nine statues that arrived here 2,000 years ago and remain undiscovered to this day. In 2015, Halifax resident John Krause was diving in the oceans off of Nova Scotia when he made an unexpected discovery. His find takes us back to the 1870s, the age of the bottle he found underwater. This means that the bottle is as old as Canada itself. The clear markings on the bottle points to one of Canada's oldest and most respected breweries, founded in 1820 by Scottish immigrant Alexander Keith. So it was reasonable to assume that beer still might be sloshing inside. When the bottle was found, it was almost full and still sealed. Researchers from Dalhousie University analyzed the contents and reported that, despite its age, the beer inside was still drinkable. Of course, no one dared to try the ancient liquid, even from such a famous brand. John decided to keep the bottle for himself and preserve it for posterity. How about you? Would you take a sip from this marinating beer from over two centuries ago? But if one bottle in the sea is a coincidence, a whole batch of goods is a drama. In 1917, during World War I, a time of political turmoil, the Swedish cargo ship Kuros was transporting a precious cargo destined for Russian aristocracy. The ships hold slosh elite spirits, fresh cognac and benedictine, a strong liquor made from sugar beets and honey. This luxurious cargo was bound for the court of Tsar Nicholas II, but a German submarine intercepted and sank the Kuros. The ship sank to the depth of nearly 250 feet and remained untouched for over a century. It wasn't until 2019 that the Ocean X team, led by Peter Lindbergh and Dennis Asberg, decided to find the historical stash. Despite the depth and cool temperature, the team made an unprecedented dive, bringing up around 900 bottles from over a century ago. Each bottle tells the story of a bygone era. The stash included 50 cases of cognac and 15 cases of liquor, which, despite the age, was still drinkable. Of course, few would risk tasting them, but their combined value is estimated at over a million dollars. It's said that wine turns to poison after a hundred years, but cognac doesn't spoil. There's also talk that aside from the bottles, the team found a mysterious huge disc on the seafloor, etched with geometric shapes, possibly of alien origin. But that's a story for another day.
Now, let's talk about the second find by Ocean X. In the same year, the Swedish divers encountered an underwater anomaly in the Baltic. Their equipment began to fail, and the ship experienced electrical outages. They discovered a strange structure on the seafloor, a disc-shaped object around 200 feet in diameter, with a track leading away from it. It looked as if the disc had traveled along the seabed for some distance before stopping at a depth of around 300 feet. Suspecting it might not be a natural formation, the divers tried to get close, but the object suddenly began interfering. All cameras and satellite phones failed. Oddly enough, the devices resumed working once they moved away from the object. The unusual shape and strange occurrences led to theories and rumors that the disc was a crashed UFO. Some thought it was an ancient relic from the Ice Age or maybe an underwater alien base. The strange object found on the seabed doesn't look like anything. It's not a plant or a rock, and certainly not a sunken ship. The only thing that comes to mind is a flying saucer, the researchers say. Scientists studied samples and suggested it might be a natural geological formation or volcanic rock, but its exact origin remains unknown. This underwater graveyard is located around a thousand miles northwest of New Guinea and the western Pacific Ocean. It seems like this lagoon, a small part of Micronesia, was lost land that could have lived its own isolated life, but its turbulent history began with the arrival of the Spanish in 1528. Even then, Spanish colonizers officially claimed the territory. In 1899, the land was transferred to Germany, and then, after the defeat in World War I, Japan gained ownership, and a Japanese naval base was established there. The formidable fleet, including battleships, aircraft carriers, and submarines, filled the natural landscape. In February 1944, the U.S. launched Operation Hailstone, a massive two-day attack on the lagoon, including continuous air raids that sank over 40 Japanese ships and destroyed 250 planes. The devastation was enormous, claiming the lives of thousands of Japanese soldiers and sailors. Today, all that remains of the ghostly fleet is an underwater graveyard of ships and active currents in the area. However, divers who descend to the location often return with eerie feelings from stories of the ocean. They report sudden temperature drops, mysterious currents, and the feeling of being watched. Some even claim to have seen the ghosts of sailors. We don't know if this is true, but this location and the events connected are still being discussed. In 2020, divers were on a routine mission. They were tasked with cleaning abandoned fishing nets on the bottom of the Baltic Sea, which posed significant threat to marine life. However, when they stumbled upon rust-covered seaweed, they realized that this dive had rewarded them with something far greater. Before their eyes was an invention that looked like a vintage typewriter. At the time, they didn't know that they had found a rare World War II artifact a cipher machine called Enigma. It was used by the Nazis to encrypt messages within military communications. Enigma was considered an engineering marvel of its time. The device is considered the most complex encryption machine in human history. Its creator, Arthur Sherbias, is a doctor of technical sciences who patented the invention and then sold it under the same brand name. The device is considered the most complex encryption machine in human history with the number of symbol combinations reaching an intimidating figure of 159 quintillion. To decipher these messages, the receiving side needed another Enigma machine with its rotor wheels set in the same positions. This complex system allowed German troops to safely transmit secret information. Hackers, led by British mathematician Alan Turing, eventually cracked the code of this particular machine, and historians managed to establish the chronology of events. The machine was likely used on a German warship. The device was thrown overboard on May 1945 when German forces scuttled their ships to prevent them from falling into the hands of the anti-fascist allies. Ancient wooden ships not only carried people, but also cargo, cats, and rats, but worst of all, hosted its very own parasites, wood-eating worms. Looking at this giant worm, it's not hard to imagine it feasting on someone's ship for a long time. Scientists discovered this bizarre creature in the Philippines. 
For some, it's fascinating science fiction, but for most people, it's a hellish nightmare. Before you turn away, it's worth noting that it's unfair to call this a worm. It's actually a type of mollusk. For centuries, this species had a tough diet. They diligently chewed through wood chips and docks. However, this giant evolved in a completely unexpected direction. Previously, only lifeless specimens were found, but this inhabitant of the southern waters in the Philippines was found alive in a harbor filled with rotting wood and other debris. Such conditions allowed these strange creatures to thrive and grow so incredibly large on a sulfur diet. Apart from wood, its habitat was rich in hydrogen sulfide. You know, the toxic gas that smells of rotten eggs. It seems that these creatures adapted to such environments and learned to extract nutrients from what was abundant around them. Scientists also found that giant shipworms act as symbiotic bacteria, oxidizing hydrogen sulfide and feeding on hydrocarbon compounds, which they themselves produce through symbiosis. That's what allowed them to grow to such enormous sizes. How would you feel sailing across the ocean on a ship, knowing that such a monster was traveling in the hole with you? Write in the comments below. In 2023, Japanese diver Yosuko Tanaka and his wife had an incredible experience during a cold January dive near the town of Toyoka. Despite the warning by local fishing gear traders about the sighting of a massive sea creature in the waters, they decided to take the plunge, hoping to encounter the mysterious ocean dweller. To their surprise, their hopes were realized. They managed to capture close-up footage of a giant squid a creature rarely seen near human habitats. Even if they encountered a smaller representative of its species, it's important to note that these squids can grow up to 43 feet long or more. Typically, they live at the great depths of over 1,000 to 2,000 feet, where sunlight barely reaches, and they remain practically invisible. The Japanese couple was incredibly lucky to meet one of these fantastic animals in shallow water. The mystery remains. How did this giant squid end up here? Unfortunately, it's likely by that point, its life was already coming to an end. In a weakened state, it ventured close to the surface. Nevertheless, the encounter will remain unforgettable for the divers. In 2017, a diver off the coast of Australia encountered a creature that looked like a transparent corrugated tube. Even researchers were baffled when they first saw this structure. It resembled an alien creature. However, a more thorough inspection and analysis by marine biologists revealed that this glowing mass was actually a colony of cuttlefish eggs. Such encounters are rare, and this tube can grow up to 6.5 feet in length. One colony contains a thousand eggs, and the pinkish glow is caused by pigment-containing and light-reflecting cells called chromatophores. The colony can move freely, so now you know. If you see something like this in the open ocean, it's not dangerous. Even more fascinating than the giant squid itself is its methods of reproduction. A massive egg floating in a bubble can also look like an alien creature. In reality, we are seeing a sack in which juveniles will hatch, proving just how enormous these creatures are. Its size is comparable of that of a human adult. On October 6, 2019, Diver Ronald Rush from a Norwegian research vessel captured this giant object on camera. His group was exploring the area in search of World War II artifacts, looking for shipwreck traces off the coast of Norway, when they encountered the giant egg at a depth of 50 feet. Such a bubble can contain 50 to 200,000 juvenile squids, securely packed in a gelatinous sphere. This gives them a chance to grow until they can swim and feed independently. The sac is made of a mixture of squid ink and mucus, a protective environment for the developing embryos. The discovery was especially exciting for marine biologists, as it's rare to observe this process in real time. Can you imagine a jellyfish larger than a diver? Once again, the ocean proves to us that it is the most terrifying place on Earth. Imagine swimming underwater at depth, and if you make one careless move, you could immediately put yourself in danger. What if you saw a giant creature swimming nearby? Encountering an animal in the wild is an unpredictable scenario. 
That's exactly what marine biologist and Wildlife Channel host Lizzie Daly experienced during a dive off the coast of the United Kingdom. The woman diver and her friend were taking photos to attract the attention of their followers, and in an unlikely way, they succeeded. The barrel jellyfish, over five feet long, swam next to the diver for over an hour, making for an unforgettable experience. This type of jellyfish weighs over 66 pounds, and its head measured more than six feet in diameter. Such a jellyfish is rarely seen off the coasts of England. It normally lives deep below, but due to warm weather, plankton flourished in shallow waters, which attracted the giant jellyfish. In reality, they are harmless to humans. Even if one stings you, you probably wouldn't feel a thing. However, it's best to keep a safe distance for any wild animals, even if they don't appear aggressive. Among the ocean dwellers, special attention should be given to the astonishing sunfish. This species, called Mola alexandrini, is quite unmistakable due to its bizarre appearance. But did you know that this almost round, massive body can weigh more than two tons? Yes, this is the heaviest bony fish in the world. This species is related to the ocean sunfish, known as Mola Mola. The sunfish looks similar but has its own features. It can grow up to 10 feet long and has a noticeable bump on its head. The species inhabits warmer parts of the ocean, and these fish are often seen near the surface, basking in the sun. These creatures are known as gentle giants, which pose no threat to humans. Therefore, swimming next to them is pure enjoyment, even for a novice diver. Alongside large marine animals such as sharks, rays, and even whales, remoras, also known as shark suckers, often travel. They use the suction cups on their head to attach themselves to their host, hitching a ride across the ocean and feeding on the leftovers from their host's meal. Generally, large fish don't mind. The relationship between remoras and sharks is known as mutualism, or in layman's terms, a mutually beneficial relationship. In exchange for the leftovers, the shark receives free cleaning of its skin and mouth from parasites. The remora is a massage therapist, skin specialist, and dentist for the predator. It's a personal support staff. However, it seems this remora got its address wrong. In 2017, a diver in coral reefs found a remora had attached itself to him. The diver didn't realize what was happening at first. Acting on instinct, the fish mistook the diver for a shark or another large creature. It simply perceives the size and movement and doesn't think for too long. Coral reefs are a popular spot to encounter them, so if you see a remora near you, don't worry that a predator might be nearby. Remoras are harmless to humans, and if they try to attach themselves to you, it'll just feel ticklish, that's all. Do you know how whales sleep? It's said that the largest land animals, elephants, sleep standing up. Whales also need rest, but they must breathe underwater while they sleep. Sometimes divers are lucky enough to encounter a group of whales sleeping in the middle of the ocean. They also sleep in vertical positions, heads up. This may look strange, but unlike humans, they can't afford to be in a completely unconscious state. Their type of sleep is known as unihemispheric slow-wave sleep. This allows one hemisphere of the brain to rest while the other remains active. In other words, one half of their brain stays awake, controlling breathing and staying aware of potential danger, while the other gets a full rest. Plus, this position allows them to quickly surface for air. Usually, whales sleep in 20-minute intervals, coming up for a fresh breath, and this process continues for over several hours. If divers hadn't captured this sight, we would never have believed that it's possible. Air travel is known to be faster and more reliable, but for cost reasons, most of our cargo travels by sea. What do you think of this? Several divers reportedly discover a giant cargo ship underwater filled with dozens of luxury cars. Statistically, around 1,560 containers are lost at sea each year, and it's no surprise that accidents can result in millions of dollars in losses, considering the values of the cars that sank into the abyss. Unfortunately, restoring them is impossible. Ancient wrecks are valuable, but luxury cars underwater turns into scrap metal. Again and again, the ocean continues to prove its dominance. What do you think of the photo? 
Would you dive down to take one of them for a ride? If your phone falls into the ocean, chances are you'll never see it again. Unless, of course, you have a professional diver among your friends. However, a phone that's been in the water is unlikely to function as it did before, but there are exceptions. A diver named Alex was part of a large cleanup campaign located in South Florida in the Boca Ranton. During the underwater cleanup, he found a phone at the bottom and realized that it was in a waterproof case. Alex was used to finding all sorts of objects but was surprised to see that this iPhone remained in perfect condition. Upon returning to the office, Alex tried to charge it and was delighted that the phone turned on. Using the emergency contact from the screen, he found the owner's mother and called to deliver the good news. She explained that her son had lost it a few days ago while fishing with his father, but had already given up in finding the phone. That day, Alex managed to do more than one good deed. Besides the iPhone, he saved hundreds of marine animals that had been affected by trash in the ocean. Thank you for watching, and if you have other deep sea discoveries to share, feel free to write about them in the comments below. Also, check out our other cool collections. They're appearing on the screen right now. See you on the next episode on the Top Facts channel.